I was Margaret Christina Nicholson because I was born in Scotland. I came down to London at the age of ten and a half. Um, so I grew up in London really, although I used to go back to Scotland um, quite a bit. So my real name was Nicholson, N-I-C-O-L-S-O-N, without the H, a Scottish spelling. Well, I suppose for me, I started improvising with my mother really, because my mum used to talk a made-up language. We used to do this made-up language together when I was a wee child. So I'd already been exposed to some sort of crazy improvisation through my mother. I only realised that really when we started doing it again before she died. You know, we you know we used to do that, and um, but in terms of the music, um, I was singing bebop, and I'd, I'd sung in a strip club, I'd sung cabaret, and then and then some. I was when Ronnie Scott's closed in in um, Gerard Street. It reopened a couple of years later as the old place, and there was people like Mike Westbrook and Phil. Well, I never heard Phil because he was in Sweden then. So, I, but I remember sort of quite shyly because I was very insecure. But I remember saying to people, "I can hear a voice. I can hear a voice. I'd like to, you know, I want to do this with my voice." And somebody said, "Oh, John Stevens uses voices." So I went up the little theatre club, you know. Um, and I was terrified and, and John Stevens introduced me to free improvisation basically with a very inclusive piece. I never forget when he set it up, he said, it don't matter, he said, if your voice wobbles, wavers or croaks. And I was terrified and my voice wobbled and it wavered and it croaked. But the sheer repetition of this piece with John playing the gong, Trevor Watts playing a note on the alto, and it just metamorphosized into this stunningly free piece. So I went straight in the deep end, really. And that was it. Once I'd experienced that, there was no going back because I'd never felt such a, a bliss. It was sheer bliss. So that was really how I started. And then, of course, I started meeting other improvisers through John, through Trevor. And then, of course, there was lots of you know, different ways to approach improvisation. My introduction was through John, but there was lots of people doing very different, you know, being much, maybe just coming straight from a place of spontaneity, not necessarily doing, you know, introductory pieces to get you into that altered state. Oh, uh, yeah. 
building an art and it is an art that is a birthright so i mean we run a gathering now which has been going for 25 years and the gathering you just do it basically but with but what is good for people that are maybe shy or a bit anxious John's pieces are perfect because for example there's one piece that I will I'm sure I'll do in the workshop the sustain piece which is the piece I was explaining where you just take a breath and you sing the first note that comes into your head and it as it said it doesn't matter if your voice wobbles waves or croaks and other people can sing different notes or play different notes. It doesn't matter if you have cerebral palsy, if you're a trained opera singer, you don't pretend to be something that you're not. You just, your sound on your instrument or, you know, or, or your voice or any other instrument just comes out as it comes out. But then you repeat it and you repeat it long enough so that you can really be free to listen. So basically, it's that thing of repetition. What happens is there's no such thing as repetition in a way. You are, you're never really doing it exactly the same because we're not machines. So each time there's a subtle difference. And also because you're doing it in your own breath, you're hearing different combinations of sounds because people are breathing at different times. And what happens is that you get excited by what you're hearing and notes start to bend towards each other. And in a way, you are improvising before you realise it's almost for me, free improvisation for me when it is the most stunning is when you almost get out of the conscious mind and you let it just come from that intuitive deep place. Now you can do that without John's exercises. However, you know, it, it, they are a very useful way of helping people in. But the gathering, you might just have people that are more experienced. You know, for example, if I'm doing a gathering and somebody comes who want to use their voice, I might just do something as simple as like, and it all grows from that grows from the breath so that's without any structured pieces but somebody might think oh thank goodness I can sigh I can go ha you know Phil Minton in Feral Choir will use laughter he'll get everybody laughing and you know so it's really just drawing on what sort of sounds we already have and then I find that I all can be I can do things I could never do if I did them cold from the conscious mind a lot of the things I do when I'm in that more intuitive free space are much stronger than things I could do if somebody said now will you sing a very high note I go no I can't sing a very high note but when I'm in the thrall of just that more subliminal mind, the more the, the personal and the collective unconscious, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. When I'm in that space, I can do things that are almost superhuman. And I think everybody can. And I find that very exciting. So it, it's a great level because people can have been playing for, like John would, John, like with John's pieces, you could have been doing it for 60 years or have literally just done it for the first time. Somebody could have bought a, a, an instrument from the music shop that very day and, some, and, and in the same group, there could be somebody that had been playing for years. But it's that thing of you just, you know, you, you just find your own authentic level with it. It's what I call social virtuosity, mixed ability. And John was a master of mixed ability. And I love that. I love that, that you, you don't pretend you haven't trained for, you know, but you also don't have to pretend that you've trained. You know, I, I wasn't, I didn't do any official training. I have not been trained as a singer. But, you know, but nevertheless, I've trained in the field just through doing it and then learning exercises from different people. And I've, I've built up a kind of creative practice. <laughs>
workshops. I love sharing because it's, for me, this music or whether it's whatever, you know, this, the, the practice of free improvisation, free improvisation for me is a practice of freedom. You're, I'm practicing freedom and I'm practicing healing and liberation and I love to share that because everybody's an improviser. You know, we, you know you've not, you're not really working from a script. You've had some ideas of what you might ask me, but you've learned a language and now we're improvised. This in, interview is improvised. Our conversations are improvised. So it's just, it's just going deeper into something we already do anyway. We are improvisers. Everything, you know, the, the universe is improvisation. Every, so it's, I suppose it's just, you know, trying to find different ways in. And as I say, what I used to love about Mel Davis and the People Band, which of course Terry was involved with and Paul Jolly and everything, they would just get in a room and play and just go through whatever chaos and amazing things would emerge from that and the gatherings like that too. So for me, it doesn't matter how people approach it. There's as many different ways of improvising as there are people. So, you know, different, you know, different workshop facilitators will focus on different aspects. But I like, I like to do the, I love to do John's pieces, other pieces, but I also like to do the gathering that is completely unstructured. There's no instructions. It's not a workshop. You just trust. You just trust that people can self-regulate, and that's exciting too. Well, I suppose I use I use movement because I used to be a dancer, but I did I did um, I did work. I was a windmill girl, so I did learn. You know, I did dance. You know, and, and I learned to do sort of chorus line and kicking and tap and you know. So, but I never I, I, I the first time I used it in free improvisation. I didn't use it with John. Um, John always accused me of being very theatrical anyway but but I it, the first time I really let it happen was I was doing a gig with my ex-husband he was a trumpet player me and Harry and Chris Francis and there was I can't remember the, the drummer but I remember during this gig struggling and thinking I'm lying I'm lying and before I knew what what was happening I was actually saying it aloud I was going I'm lying I'm lying and there was something about owning up that released something and I started dancing and I think that's when I realised I could draw on that history of being a dancer. So I used that. And I've also done theatre as well, fringe theatre. So I bring in elements. I like to, to draw the one thing. I mean, I improvise. Um, I doodle and I improvise drawings, but I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a painter. So, but, you know, I love, I love, I love improvisation, whatever it is.
It's much more generous. I think it was necessary in the beginning that, you know, like, for example, you're learning a new language. And, it, 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 and I think that the pioneers, you know, you know, which were mainly men, I didn't know Irena, but Irena Schweitzer, of course, was out there on her own with all the heavy German men, you know, really holding her own. But, you know, I, I didn't, it was all, I didn't, apart from vocalists, I didn't know any other um, women improvising. So I think that's changed a lot. There's a lot more women and there's a lot more diversity. Yes, in the beginning, you're learning a new language. You don't want to just play your licks. You don't just want to do, because I mean, I, I sang, as I say, I sang with soul bands, rock bands, you know, straight ahead jazz standards and stuff. And I didn't want to just do what I already knew, but weird, you know, doing just jazz, but making it sound weird. So I had to learn a new language. So I think in the beginning, when we were learning a new language, it was almost like you needed to not you needed to almost if, to be fluent in it, immerse yourself in it. But I think once you immersed and learnt that language, then for me, it's lovely to then reintegrate all the different influences, all the different parts. And I think that's much more common now. Many, many people are drawing on, you know, like say somebody like Eugene Chadburn did a fantastic, he's done a couple of CDs of his sort of rockabilly which is his roots, so he does rockabilly, but free. He does a bit of rockabilly and then throws it all over the place. And, you know, I think people are not so... People are, are owning their history and allowing that to be inform their music and they feel confident. So, whereas before I can remember as a woman sitting with all these learned men and, and there was different cliques and they would all be slagging each other off and I think, oh, my God, I can't send them because I like, I like all... I like what they're all doing. And I used to feel there was something morally inferior and I didn't have a grasp of aesthetics because I couldn't differentiate I could I, lo I thought well I like what that one's doing and I like what that and now I think it's much more yeah that's it, it, I love the diversity I love the fact that there's so many different people doing improvisation in different ways the more inclusive the more you know for me I, I love that you know from the purest to the actual unashamedly you know let it all hang out I, and everything in between I, I don't I don't care who's doing it I think it's a human it's fascinating human experience uh -huh.